So there's a lot of controversy right now about this new Lumix GH7 and about how it can supposedly be a new Ari Alexa. Now whether or not that's true, I'm not totally sold on it, but I want to talk personally on it because I've shot two projects now where A camera has been the Ari Alexa Mini LF and the B camera has been the GH7 and I just wanted to talk about it because there's a lot of things that I actually like about it surprisingly so because in the beginning I was pretty skeptical. But I want to start before getting into anything by saying that this video is not sponsored by Lumix. They did not pay me. They did not even tell me to do this. I shot one project with my creator crew uh, uh, on a film called No Good Legends where that was the B camera and then I was actually quite impressed with it so I asked them if I could borrow it for one other project. So no sponsorships involved in this at all. It's just me wanting to speak on the topic because I've shot a couple of projects on it and I'm actually pretty impressed with it. But there is a sponsor for this video today and that is audio but we'll get to that down the line. Now, like I said, there's two different projects that I shot this on, and I want to just talk through my my use case scenario, I guess you could call it. What I liked about it, some things I might not like about it, who this could be for. It's not a tech review. It's not getting into the tech specs. There's videos about that. I just want to say that I use this camera, A and B camera setup, and, and I was impressed, and that's how we'll start with. And as far as footage goes, I'm going to try to show you the most footage I can as possible. One of them is pretty hush hush until it actually goes live and the other one uh, is kind of the same because it's going through some festival runs. So I'm going to show you what I can to be able to display to you the examples uh, that I'm really talking about. Now, why why are, if you're new to the game, why are people talking about this being the new Ari Alexa? It's because uh, Lumix teamed up with Ari in some sort of way. I don't know the technical insides of it, but pretty much they got the licensing to be able to use Ari Log 3, which is the exact color profile that is used on the Alexa Mini and the Alexa Mini LF and probably a couple of other of their cameras. So going into the first film that we were shooting on it, it was the B camera and I was like, yeah... I don't know, it probably doesn't have the dynamic range and it probably doesn't look this or it doesn't look that. I was really skeptical because I didn't know, I didn't look into it. But I was like, all right, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. Let's see how it looks. There was a turning point where I was looking at the monitor on the film and I was like, wait a second, this looks nice. This looks really good. Yes, it's through a monitor. I'm not making any final opinions on it, but it's impressive and I'm curious to play with it more. So that kind of went by and we shot the rest of the project on it. And it wasn't until I went home with the footage and I just opened it up blindly. I was like, all right, let's 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 see where I can push this, etc." And I started to put the clips next to each other with the A camera of the mini and the, the B camera is the GH7. And I copied over the grades that I did and I was like, whoa. That's when things started to shift for me and that's when I kind of started to realize that this could actually be a really helpful tool to work with. The, the colors, and I'm not a colorist, but I, I like to say I'm pretty competent coloring. The skin tones retained really nicely. The colors carried over almost identical to it. There was some slight gamma shifting that I needed to do and maybe a little bit of saturation that I had to dial back. But these are like minuscule, minuscule things. And for the most part, I was very impressed with going through it for the first time, for my first impressions to it. Editor Brady here, I just wanna say, uh, as I've been going through the footage and playing around with it a little bit more, I found the GH7 just to be continuously a little bit magenta. Now that could have come from the ND filters because the, min or the Alexa has built-in ND, but we had to add on to the GH7. So I think there was a magenta cast coming from that but I'm not 100% sure if it's that or a color science thing, but in the color grades, I just found myself pulling the GH7 a little bit less magenta back into that greener world where the LF is sitting. So I just wanted to make note of that. Just subtle tweaks here that I'm just gonna pre-adjust all of the footage you see. Just know that it's kind of got a subtle green shift in the grade, just to match up a little bit more. I think that's one of the biggest things is when you've got multiple cameras, especially on quick turnaround projects, you need something where the color profile matches up almost identically. That's why I love my FX6 and my FX3 combo because it just copies over really fast and easy. So that's kind of what we're starting to hint at here is that it really does have this Alexa look, I'm not gonna lie. Of course, sensor size, if we get into that, you're looking at micro four thirds versus LF, like large format sensor for what case I was using it in. But you're gonna lose a few things with this smaller sensor, which is why I'm gonna jump in now and say, this is not a replacement. It is not made in Lumix eyes or in the consumer's eyes to replace the Alexa. I just don't think that it serves that purpose and I don't want it to come off like I'm saying it replaces it because it doesn't. But there are cases where it can replace it in a sense of say, we don't have a budget for two Alexa minis. 
Obviously not, they're freaking expensive. I'm lucky enough to get one on my projects. So say this example or these last two shoots, we've got one Alexa Mini LF, but we need a two camera setup or even a three camera setup, but we can't afford that, but we need them to match up. Well, you've got the other option of going with a cheaper camera system, like a couple of reds or something like that. But if you need Alexa, you now are introduced with this option as a B camera being the GH7 and having those profiles matched up together, which to me is a huge benefit. Would I buy it? I'm not quite sure, but now is the time to take a little break and just talk about the sponsor for today who I mentioned is Audio. Now Audio is a music licensing platform and has actually as of recently become more and more familiar to me and that's because it's always kind of saving the day. I'm always looking around on all the different platforms and there's a lot of times where I'm like, I can't find anything or I've already used those or whatever. And I go over to Audio and I'll punch in what I think I need and I find it very, very quickly. Now their selection of artists are fantastic, but one feature that really sticks out to me is the link match AI feature that they've got. So pretty much in a nutshell, say I use Spotify, I'm listening to my music, I'm out and about, I love the vibes of it, I'm like, this would fit in my project. I go to Spotify, I take that song and I copy the link of it, like I'm gonna share it with you, but instead I bring it into audio and drop it in and then it just uses AI to analyze whatever the insides of it is and will give you a large selection of a lot of different songs that are very, very similar to that. And that to me, whoever thought of that, it saves me a ton of time because I hate culling through genres when I barely know genres. Audio has been a great platform for me. The artists are fantastic artists, they're real artists, and they work with them in a really fun way, in a very artist-friendly way. I met with them a little while back and I was like, wow, I love how you guys take care of your artists, and that speaks a lot to me being an artist of film. If you are curious of audio, go check it out. I'm gonna leave all the info right here. And you can get 70% off your first year of Audio Pro, getting you unlimited music sound effects and access to their AI tools for just $59 if you use code Brady70. But let's go back to talking about camera fun stuff. Would I buy it? I'm not quite sure. I think for me, I would see this beneficial as a unit that I'm renting very, very frequently on a project where I'm also renting Alexa from. So that's not me saying, I don't like it, I won't buy it. It's me saying I rent a lot of cameras for projects and that's when I see it being the most used for me. And then I mentioned a little bit the dynamic range. I think they're rated at just over 13 stops and I wanna say the Alexa is like 15 or 16 stops. So there's a difference there that you might wanna account for that I noticed a little bit of pinching on like skylight and background light as opposed to the shadows and it just not being as dynamic as Alexa. But again, you're paying 2,000 something dollars instead of 50,000 something dollars. So that's something to kind of keep into account as a trade-off as well. And then there's also some other use case scenarios that I think would strive with this is like special shots or uh, tight shots. Say you're sticking something in an oven or top-down shots where you don't want to rig out a whole big cinema build overhead or any of these just like fly cams, like throwing it on a drone, specials, crash cams, anything where you're putting a camera either somewhere tight or you need to be moving very fast with your camera. That's where I think this could thrive because you're not gonna be doing it with a whole mini. It's just too big, it just doesn't make sense. But if you've got a second camera that you can throw in a corner, that to me sounds like a benefit. And then also, when we were on No Good Legends, we had a lot of long shots. Now, I know we say micro four thirds, it's a crop sensor, it's super tiny, you can't get the wide shots out of it, but we never talk about when we need more length. The lenses we were using on that were Atlas Mercury's and I think the longest we had was like a 136. So there were some times when we needed long shots and I was like, let's just throw it on the GH7 because a 136 is immediately now like a 240 or something like that. So you're doubling that and actually getting a lot more reach out of it to where you might not on the mini. So I don't know if that's like an actual reason to like or prefer this camera. I think it could have been a specialty use to where it worked on this project. But really, I just wanted to shine light on what use this would work for me and just talk on the GH7 in a very unorganized fashion, in a very untechnical fashion as to how this would work and how this has worked for me. So to recap, it's not at all in any way a direct replacement of the Ari Alexa but it is a tool that can enhance that workflow of if you're shooting with Ari. Say you got a day where you're going out for a half day, rental house will still charge you full day, just rent the cheaper camera and get the pickup shot. So do the meat of the days on Alexa and then do those pickup days on a smaller camera that still matches up. I don't know, I'm just coming up with ideas on the spot, but I think that it's a good tool. I'm really impressed with what Lumix is doing with this and all in all, I don't, I don't have many bad things to say because I haven't pushed this camera to its limits, quite honestly, I've just used it and seen where it thrives. And that's where I'm at for right now. So 
I apologize if you thought this was a techie review and a breakdown of what's right and what's wrong. That's where I'm going to leave it at before I just bore you with random facts and start talking about my life or something like that. But yeah, the GH7, it's impressive. I liked it. I will work with it again. Anyway, I will get going because I'm here on vacation, obviously, kind of shows. But I love you guys and I'll talk to you soon.